Here I prove the theorem of uh, losing in S21, which says that for every measurable function there is, and for every positive delta, there is a measurable subset. For every measurable function on the integral AB, and for every positive delta, there is a measurable subset of the integral AB, such that function f is continuous when restricted to this measurable subset. And the measure of the complement within the integral AB is less than delta. Is a proof. Uh, we recall that a uh, measurable subset is something which is for every delta has an approximation, like this, from the minimal enveloping ring. Finite union, finite disjoint union of finite disjoint union of uh, half open intervals. Now, what I will do first, I will prove the theorem for special case when the function is indicative function like that, and when a is a measurable subset. So, for this measurable subset and for this positive delta, well, for this positive delta, I fix this approximation a dash. And I will consider the function g, which is like this one, where chi tilde, that's the function which is pictured here, that's the function based on the interval i, interval a, b, and it is sort of an indicator function. It is sort of an indicator function uh, of the interval a, b, but which is a continuous one. So we extend my interval AB a little bit wider by this supplied positive, little positive number delta and construct this trapezoid and that's a kind of function is chi tilde. It is based on the interval i, so it's, it is 1 on the interval i, but it is a little bit wider than just simply the indicator. By the way, I just forgot to mention that uh, I haven't finished actually quoting the measurability definition set A is measurable when there is an approximation for every delta. There is an approximation such that there, such that this symmetric difference has measure less than delta. And the approximation comes from the minimal enveloping ring. So here IK is this, this intervals and that's how I choose my widening parameter delta. It will be delta on 2 to the power K where delta is this one. Now, now I will set the subset E like this. It will be the the that, that's how we will define the subset E where A double dash is the union of these wider intervals IK. Okay, so the intervals with this extra little delta widenings. Uh, now what I claim is uh, first is that the complement, the measure of the complement of this set E is controlled like that. It's uh, the complement is in fact is this bracket, and that is controlled by the measure of this symmetric difference by which is delta and by this difference. And this difference is just a union of all of these extra little intervals, uh, and length of each individual interval is controlled by this geometric progression. Sum of two such geometric progressions. Is less, in fact, the correct sign should be here less or equal. The correct sign here, <coughs> the correct sign here less or equal because we don't have a full, a complete sum of the geometric progression, but only the first partial sum of the geometric progression. Now, function g is a continuous function because it's a finite sum of continuous functions. Moreover, what I claim is that if I take an element x from E, then if I consider options, two options, either x in the intersection like this, or x is not in such intersection, on both of these possibilities, I see, well, the first one is easiest to analyze. If I have this possibility, x from A, then because f is an indicator of A, then f of x is 1, and because A dash is the union of these intervals over these intervals, my g function is also always 1, we have this identity f equal to g if we have x from here. If we don't have x from here, since x came from 
e, so x doesn't belong to this bracket, which means x doesn't belong either to this little bracket or to this bracket. Uh, we also see that x will be not in the union of a and a dash, and x will not be in a double dash. And that's two things we have simultaneously. Uh, now, from the first one, we see, because x is not in a, we conclude that the f function delivers 0 at this x, because x is not in a double dash, g function is considered, uh, delivers 0 also in this point. So altogether we see that no matter what happens with x, when it comes from e, we have function f equal to the function g. So, in fact, we proved a stronger statement than just the claim of this theorem. We proved that if you have a function of this particular type, then not only we can find a subset e where the function will be continuous, in fact, we found a function g which is continuous across the whole interval a, b, such that this g function coincides with my original f function, the indicator, over this subset e. So this is, in fact, stronger statement, stronger version of this theorem, in relation to this particular choice of a function. Now we can finish with uh, the proof of theorem for any measurable function. To this end I'll fix two positive numbers, psalm and delta, and the first thing I will do, I will consider the special function f dash, which is defined like this. It's a sum across all integers of scalar multiples of indicators, like that, where ak is the indicator, like this. What I claim is that the supremum of the difference between f and f dash across the interval a, b is less than epsilon. Why is that? Uh, the easiest way to do that is just first observe that the interval a, b admits this partial, sorry, admits this disjoint represent union, representation by this disjoint union, by the sets a, k, right? Uh, and if so, then showing the supremum uh, will, uh, to show the supremum, in fact, all you have to do, you have to show the supremum across each individual AK, but over the individual AK it's almost obvious because over one single AK your function is squeezed between these two numbers, whereas the function of dash is just this number, and the difference between these two numbers is epsilon. So this is indeed true, plus this identity also tells me that because the measure, because of the sigma additivity of the measure, and because the measure of this interval AB is finite, we also have that the this series converges. In particular, I can find the tail, which is less than delta. And so now if I take the f double dash function, which will be the part of the f dash sum, portion of this sum, which is not covered by this tail, so it will be this finite sum now, then the difference between f dash and f double dash will be, I mean, in fact, it, these, these two functions, they, they will be differ, they will be different, sorry, over this tail. That's why the measure of this difference, or measure of this set, that's why the measure of the set is less than delta. Now, we can use the previous argument like this. We can now uh, say that uh, because f double dash is a finite sum of indicators, each individual indicator can be supplied with this function g, like that, which is a continuous function, and which coincides with this indicator on a large set. The same can be the same can be said about this finite sum of such indicators. So what I say is that we have a function g, which is a continuous function such that it coincides with my f double dash function everywhere across a specific set E such that also that the complement of the set E is less than delta. In particular, in particular, I can say that the measure of the set of the different set like this is less than delta as well because this set will be just this complement because everywhere else Beyond this complement, my functions just coincide. Now I think we can finish the proof like this. Um, we can finish the proof like this. 
in fact, before I can finish the proof, I have to make another observation. I have to make the observation that because f dash and f double dash difference bigger than epsilon on a set of measure less than delta, the same is true about the difference between f and f double dash. This is a simple triangle inequality. What I say is that for this inequality to happen, uh, there should be this inequality true as well. Because if this inequality is not true, if you have the opposite inequality here, because of this opposite inequality, or because of this inequality, in fact, if you combine these two together, I mean, if you combine the opposite inequality here, together with this, and triangle inequality, you will have the opposite inequality here. That's why, in fact, this set here is just a subset of this set, and that's why this measure of this set is also less than delta. Now we can finish the proof, because now I will say that the measure of measure of this set, where the difference between f and g, my original f and my continuous g, bigger than 4 epsilon, this is just a triangle inequality again, I can embed this set into the union of two sets like that, uh, because if none, none of this is true, if you have the opposite inequality here and opposite inequality here, then by triangle inequality you have the opposite inequality here. And because of this embedding, this measure is controlled by these two individual measures, and the whole control is just 2 delta. Because this is less than delta, and this is less than delta. So see what happened? For a measurable function f, we found a continuous function g, such that the measure of this difference like this, with 4 epsilon here, is less than 2 delta. Now I can say that if I choose epsilon like this, and if I choose delta like this, and if the associated g function will be called now gn, then just by writing this inequality, this couple of positive numbers, we have this statement, and that is effectively just the, the fact that gn converge to f in measure m, in measure topology. If we do have convergence in measure topology, we know that we can find a subsequence which, can, which converge almost everywhere, and we also know that if we have a convergence almost everywhere, we can find a measurable subset such that we have a convergence, uniform convergence on this measurable subset, and the complement of that measurable subset is less than, is less than delta in measure. And that's enough to conclude that f is in fact continuous over E, because the uniform limit, uniform limit of continuous functions is also continuous. In fact, because these functions are in fact uniformly continuous, then the limit will also be, in fact, uniformly continuous. Uh, this last statement, actually I have some further explaining details of that, is just a proof of it. If I have a positive epsilon, then there is an index such that this thing is less than epsilon for every k bigger than this index and for every x in your e. This is just the interpretation of the uniform convergence. If I just give a name to this function, a simpler name to this function like g dash, then by the fact that g dash is uniformly continuous function, I have a delta positive such that the increment of g dash less than epsilon given that we have x and y in difference less than delta. And now we just use a simple triangle inequality like this. We say that the difference of f in points x and y if you just take this expression, you plus it and minus it with g dash x and plus it and minus it with g dash y and use triangle inequality twice, you'll have this kind of control. Each of these absolute values individually controlled by epsilon, so we have this. And so we see that for every positive epsilon, we found delta such that, such that for a pair of x and y, with the difference less than delta, the difference of the associated function values less than free epsilon. This is exactly the statement that f is uniformly continuous over e.